Hi, everyone. Welcome to our presentation, Data-Informed NSF Proposals, Exploring and Using the New ATE Survey Dashboard. My name is Valerie Marshall, and I'm one of today's presenters. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Megan Zielinski and Lissa Wilson-Becho. All three of us work on the ATE Survey and Survey Dashboard in some capacity. This presentation is brought to you by Evaluate, the evaluation hub for the Advanced Technological Education Program. Evaluate advances evaluation in the ATE community by offering trainings, cultivating a network, researching emerging topics, and collecting data about the ATE program. The Advanced Technological Education Program, ATE for short, is funded by the National Science Foundation. The ATE program is focused on improving tech technician education, mainly through two-year colleges. It funds projects in high-tech areas, such as advanced manufacturing, engineering technologies, IT, and nanotechnologies. This is a good time to point out that the views expressed in this presentation are those of the presenters and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation. Today's presentation will focus on achieving three objectives. The first objective is to leave this presentation with a better understanding of the ATE survey and survey findings. The second objective is to understand how to to access and use the survey dashboard, which is what we'll be demonstrating later on in this presentation. Lastly, we will outline how you might use the ATE survey findings while developing an ATE proposal. Before we jump into exploring the dashboard, I wanna tell you a little bit about the ATE survey. For those of you who are not familiar with the survey, it began in 2000 and is administered on an annual basis. It's the only survey of its kind across the ATE program and captures a range of information about ATE project and center activities. All ATE grants who were active at some point during the previous calendar year were asked to complete the ATE survey. In 2020, there were a total of 325 active ATE grants. Survey respondents were asked to report on collaborations formed, project highlights, and activities that they engaged in during the year. Through a strong partnership with NSF and the ATE community, the ATE survey has been able to achieve high response rates of 90% or higher for most years. Data from the ATE survey are shared back with the ATE community through annual reports, short data snapshots, presentations, and the new survey data dashboard. Now I'm going to hand it over to Megan to share more information about the dashboard. Thank you so much, Val. I'm gonna start by giving you a little bit of background on the survey dashboard. The idea for this interactive dashboard was championed by many ATE PIs, evaluators, and researchers during the revision of the 2019 survey. It is now live and is currently housed in the survey section of Evaluate's website and can be accessed by any the survey dashboard is an interactive tool that allows users to easily access, explore, and query program and project level survey data. And its ultimate aim is to increase the accessibility and utility of data among the AT community, including current and future grantees. So I could keep telling you about the dashboard, but I think it would be even more powerful if we went into the dashboard and explored it live. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my PowerPoint and move into the website. All right, so I just went into Evaluate's homepage and I'm going to navigate over to the ATE survey tab, which is newly redesigned. When you get to the survey page, you'll find a lot of tabs with a lot of really important information about the survey, but today we're gonna to focus on this Explore Survey Data tab. All right, so now we're in the Explore Survey Data tab. And here you'll see the data dashboard. When you click into it, it currently defaults to all active 2020 projects that answer the survey, which is 294 shown right down here at the bottom. You can click through and explore these projects by award type, award size, region, discipline, and institution type. If I wanna start by looking at 2019, I can click filter, and I will see that there are 279 projects. And then I can use this clear all button to restart it at 2020. So just for the sake of exploring, let's look at all projects in 2020. And I'm from Michigan, so we'll look at those in the Midwest. 
and we'll look at two-year colleges. All right, so after running that search, we find that of the 294 projects um, that were incorporated in all active projects, only 50 um, fall under the, these criteria above. I'm gonna now move our attention over to the left side of the screen where we see different topics covered by the ATE survey. Specifically, let's look at workplace-based learning as an example. And now we see that only seven of those 50 projects included workplace-based learning in their proposal and reported that on the survey. Um, looking at these grants, we see that about 50% of those seven included business and industry field trips specifically, 20% included apprenticeships, and another 20% included internships. And moving down a little bit further, we can see the number of students that were reported to participate in workplace-based learning. So here we see that 433 received mentorship, and let's say another 170 engaged in student competitions. One more feature that I want to point, or point out is if you're not sure exactly what workplace-based learning means, you can see at the top, we have the definition right here. And you can see in this setting, it means that um, any situation where students gain experience at a work site, internship, apprenticeship, co-op learning, or job shadowing. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Alyssa, who's gonna give us some examples of how you might wanna use this dashboard in your own projects. Thank you, Megan. So during this presentation, we wanna make sure that you walk away with not only an awareness of the survey dashboard, but also about how you can use the survey data to craft a data-informed proposal for an AT, NSF ATE program. So to this end, I wanna walk through three scenarios with you today. One, for those of you who might be exploring the ATE landscape to see if it, your institution or your STEM discipline might fit. A second scenario that uses the dashboard data to, com to compare proposed activities to institutions in my region. And a final scenario that can suggest ways to engage business and industry collaborators. So how to use the survey dashboard in order to think about the, your activities and what you're gonna to propose to ATE. So in our first scenario, Say you are in the exploratory phase, you're considering whether ATE might be a good program for you or your institution. You might want to use the survey dashboard to get a general sense of the ATE activities in the past year. So a good topic to start with would be project activities. So you could scroll down and you could scan these different activities to see the areas in which most ATE projects engaged in. So you can see a little bit over half of ATE projects in 2020 engaged in professional development for educators. While only say 12% engaged in business, business and entrepreneurial skills development for students. So you might wanna look specifically at projects related to your STEM discipline. So using the filters that Megan showed us earlier, um, in this scenario, uh, say you are in information and securities technologies. So you can scroll down here and you can find information securities technology. So by checking that, you're saying, I only want to see projects in that STEM discipline. And so we can see that that filter was successful because now we're seeing an N of 61. So now if I scroll down, I still see that the top activity engaged in by ATE projects in 2020 of information and securities technologies is still professional development for educators, about the same, about half of all projects engaged in that. However, 44% um, of projects in the STEM discipline engaged in academic program development or delivery compared to only 26% of all ATE projects in 2020. So this could be a good sign that the ATE program is a right, the right place for you to submit for funding if you're looking at developing academic programs in information and securities technologies. So let's look at our second scenario. So say I decided, yes, you know, I think the ATE program is the right place for me and I do want to submit a proposal. Well, I might wanna compare what types of academic programs are being developed using ATE funds by projects in my region. So I can, develop, I can navigate to the topic on program and course development. All right. So here I can see that in 2020, ATE projects developed 71 certificates and 68 associate degrees. 
So in this small text, you'll see n equals 76. So again, this notation means that out of all the ATE projects, 76 projects responded to this question about the number of degree programs that they developed in 2020. But again, I want to compare it to, to my situation and my context. So I want to look at specifically two-year colleges in the Midwest. And I want to look at only degrees that were created in information and securities technologies. So I have my three filters chosen and I'll go ahead and hit filter. And you can tell that this worked because now instead of 76 projects, there's now seven projects that meet these criteria. And you can see that only seven associate degrees were created and five certificate programs were created. But this was only in 2020. So what if we wanna go back a little bit further and we wanna look at 2019 because we recognize that these activities can change year to year. I'll filter it again and oh, look. So now we get this error message. So this is actually done on purpose. This is not a mistake. Um, and so, so in fact, I get this message that shows me that there are not enough responses that meet these filter characteristics to display. So together, the data from these two years start to hint that not many certificate programs had been created in the area of IT in the Midwest. So I could cite this information in my proposal in order to demonstrate the context of my proposed activities. So let's go on to scenario number three. So as I write my ATE proposal, I notice that there's an emphasis on collaborating with business and industries written into the ATE solicitation. And I wanna make sure that I'm pulling from current practice of other ATE projects in the type of partners and modes of collaboration. Therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and check out the collaboration topic of the dashboard. So if I scroll down, I see that 80% of ATE projects are collaborating with a business and industry partner, but what kind of activities are they engaging those partners in? So I'll scroll to the next graph and I see that 83% of those projects are actually engaging their business partners in identifying workforce needs and 77% are serving on advisory boards. If we look a little bit further, we see that actually 35% are providing monetary or in-kind support to program sustainability or enhancement, or actually 45% are providing educators with occupational experience and training. I haven't thought about some of these activities before, so that might be something that I wanna bring up to my industry partners on our next phone call. So in these three scenarios, you can see that there are a variety of ways to use this dashboard to understand the landscape of ATE, to brainstorm proposed activities, and to place your proposal within the current funded ATE activities. So remember, citing survey data in your proposal tells reviewers that you're familiar with the ATE program and that you're dedicated to making data-informed decisions. All right, well, let's move back to our PowerPoint presentation. Great, thanks so much, Lissa. This would be the point in our presentation where we would stop to take questions from the audience. I hope we've been able to answer your questions throughout the presentation, but we also wanted to put forth a few questions we would have expected to hear from the audience. If you're watching this live and have any questions, at this point in time, please feel free to put any questions that you might have in the chat box and we'll respond via the chat. So the first question is, does Evaluate have any future plans for additional variables or features on the survey dashboard? That's a great question, Val. So we do want to continue to grow and improve this dashboard specifically to fit your needs and to fit the needs of the AT community. So if you have any ideas or suggestions for items or even functions that would be more useful to you, please let us know. Great, thanks, Lissa. Um, so the next question is, are there any limitations or considerations on what I can or cannot say with the data on the survey dashboard? Yes, so there are two things that I want to point out specifically. The first thing to keep in mind is that respondents to each survey may ch change from year to year. So that means who responded to the survey in 2020 is not the exact same pool of respondents that were included in the 2019 survey. So this means that it does not facilitate meaningful comparison from year to year. Secondly, the AT survey captures self-reported descriptive data about annual project activities. It does not currently capture outcome data or impacts. Awesome, thank you. The third question is I noticed that as you were both sharing the survey dashboard, 
that not all data from the survey report seems to be included on it. Why is that? You know, the, the data points on the dashboard were chosen as a broad representation of ATE activities that remain consistent from year to year. So we currently have 2019 and 2020 loaded into the dashboard and we're in the process of uploading 2021 data. So in order to have the his, this historic look, we just, we just can't include all data points from the survey, but you can always read about detailed findings in the full ATE survey report. Ah, that's really helpful. Thanks, Lisa. You know, how can ATE projects um, who have completed an ATE survey, whether last year or years prior, how can they access their responses? This is a question we get a lot. So currently you can email us and you can ask for a copy of your prior year response, but we are in the process of launching ATE project portals on our website. And these portals will allow every project to download all of their prior year's responses of survey data in an Excel format. So make sure to keep an eye out from an email from us very soon. So lastly, our final question is, how can I learn more about the ATE survey and the dashboard if I have additional questions? Great, yeah, so there are a lot of ways that you can learn more information. First, you can access our website, which will provide a lot of information about the survey and the dashboard, and we'll throw that information up in the next slide. Or if you're ready to explore for yourself, start playing with it and let us know um, via our emails if you have any questions that we can answer. Great, thanks so much, Megan. So thank you everyone for taking the time to watch this presentation. We hope that the information that we discussed today will help you craft a successful ATE proposal. So please make sure to visit our website at the address shown on the screen. And if you have any questions, our email is on there too. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care.